Knowledge is power, and this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Week at 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll-free. Toll-free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, everybody. This is Jen Solis, and this is Nevada Cannabis News. Um, I have Raymond Fletcher to my right, and I have William Beach Baker. Kurt is at Champs, and so is Perry. So Kurt Dukoc and, and Perry Haichu are on location at the Champs um, trade show. And if you've never been down to Champs, go. go. Definitely, definitely. Go, go, go. Yeah, definitely. And say hi to our friends at Pulse Glass. They have a, a raffle at 420, and you can win a huge glass piece if 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 you, uh, you know, enter. Uh, we also would like to say and give a shout out to our friends at Liquid leash uh, it just sounds dirtier than it is um it's actually it's it's for a water bottle to go around your neck and it's very well insulated i think kurt uh, i think that uh, raymond has something to say about liquid leash well yeah i met the gentleman from there yesterday and they were explaining that the item was from people always leaving their beverages on their booth you know so for somebody like me it comes in handy i can just wear the water bottle around my neck without having tried to hold on to the water bottle, drive my wheelchair, and do everything at the same time. So I really think, you know, and if you go down Liquid Leash, please tell them that Raymond sent you. <laughs> so thank you, and, and you guys go down to Champs. All right, directly um, for our local news, um, we actually have Kurt on the line and, uh, doing a remote from Champs. Welcome, Kurt. Kurt, what's going on? Hey, not much. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. We just started, though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, we started over here early, early today. It started up at eleven o'clock uh, when they opened the doors to to the public, and uh, it's been a, it's been a pretty uh, pretty amazing show. A little bit slower today than normal, but we expect it to pick up today and uh, tomorrow and Thursday after uh, the AGE, the American Glass Expo, let go. So, okay, for those that are uninitiated, tell us a little bit about Champs. What's what 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 is Champs? Champs is, uh, they call it a subculture expo convention. Um, it's, it's basically everything, it's got all the newest glass and the latest technology and all the oil rigs. They have live glass blowers. It's got everything that you would find in a, in a really, really, really high-end smoke shop. So they have rolling papers there. I even saw Fleshlight there. <laughs> um, so they, ha they yeah, have all know. sorts of products. They, um, I think it was Puff Daddy and, and their Pulse Glass and, and all sorts yep. of uh, distributors of counterculture type of, uh, type of stuff. So everything you'd find in a smoke shop or a novelty shop as far as cannabis or cannabis-related products or even tobacco-related products can be found there. Yeah, absolutely. You got all the all the latest vaporizers and all the all the new technology and all the all the newest and the greatest is all shown off here at Champs. Um, and you got you know you got live glass games going on. You got uh, uh, you got people blowing glass pieces, working in teams where one person starts it and then another person finishes it, and then they have it. They actually build like. Uh, a, RC cars out of glass, and they put them on an RC chassis, and they have a, they have a, you know, basically like robot wars with the glass cars, and see who's the best, who built the best one. So, wow. it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole lot of fun and a whole lot of really. really it sounds like there's flying the shrapnel. <laughs> yeah, well, they do, they do it in an enclosed glass room, so you, everyone's on the other side, so nobody can get hurt. Now, Kurt, what what kind of people are attending? Is it open to the general public or? Um, you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be in the industry somehow. There's buyers and then exhibitors. The, it's, it's really a trade show for people in the industry. But uh, a lot of people come in here as guests of the industry. You know, if you're interested, it's, it's not that difficult to get in. Um, but yeah, it is. It is buyers and vendors, and the whole idea is to you know try to get your glass. You know, show how good your glass is and get it into the shops. So, so what is Weekend doing down there? Do we have a booth? Yeah, we can have the booth. We're two we're two booths down from Pulse Glass. 
Um, we can't just down there just representing, letting people know that, you know, Nevada is a medical state, getting out the fact that we have reciprocity and that, you know, these people that are coming here, even if the people that are working, a lot of them don't know that their cards are good here in the state of Nevada. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're out there ed- educating educating the public about stuff and handing out our newsletters. And, and we also get a lot of donations because the people at Champs are, are wonderful people. And, you know, most of the people are in, in this because somebody in their family has been touched medically. And these people are very giving. And, you know, they, they donate product to us. And that is what we use for our raffles. Pulse Glass has said... Uh, committed to some pieces for our raffle for our party on the 26th. So, Woohoo, so those really are nice, really nice really pieces. Nice class there. You're absolutely right. I was at the our weekend booth earlier, and some of the pieces Pulse Glass had was just amazing. And I can certainly tell you the vibe and the people there. It's a really positive and uplifting experience. And for those of you that were awarded one of the 18 dispensary license i would highly suggest that you get your business to business connections going on and get down to chimps and make those connections you know yeah a lot of it is not only selling the product but you know you know making connections within the industry and you know working together and you know creating change well thank you for thank you for your remote um uh, report and we'll let you get back to the convention um, and and you'll ha- you'll be here in studio next week with us, right? Yes, absolutely. All so, right. Uh, Thank you for reporting. Be, hey, before you go, what are the hours for the rest of the week, and uh, where again are you located? Um, the Champs is located at the Las Vegas Convention Center in the North Hall, uh, and it is today till six o'clock, and then tomorrow and Thursday from eleven a.m. till six p.m. So. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you, Kurt. Right. Thanks a lot, Kurt. Thank you. All right, now for our local news, we've got we've got a bunch of different stuff happening in the city and the county and and all around. <laughs> Raymond, what you got for us? Well, we have a few things going on, as you already know. Uh, the city of Las Vegas is presently accepting uh, SUP permit applications, land use applications for medical marijuana establishments. Uh, the city of, I'm sorry. You're didn't gonna, they, I was going to say, didn't city extend their deadline to like the 26th, maybe? 23rd. The 23rd, yes. I don't have that in front of me right now, but yes, um, it is It is for 10 days. They opened it Tuesday of last week, and they only had one applicant, and then I believe it goes up to the 23rd of this month. And if you do not have your paper from the meeting the (laughs) pre-meeting that you're supposed to attend i will highly suggest that you reach out somebody at we can and you know try to get what you need to get that you should have done like all of us had but um but anyway (laughs) that was that was that was uh, that thank you for that (laughs) Hey, I'm, I'm I'm tired of people last minute it and expecting those of us that have been advocating at these meetings, you know, for to over per- a year now. I mean, I know there have been people doing it longer than I have, and I've only been doing it for a year. But these people with these millions of dollars wanting to come into our community, and, you know, maybe they should just do it the right way. <laughs> um Henderson. Henderson is also accepting their applications. Their application deadline is Monday, July 17th. I know. And you know what? They didn't have one applicant up until now. And you know why? Because it's so cost prohibitive. Not only is it cost prohibitive in Henderson, it's like $60,000 for an application, but they're taking 6% off the back end. You know why, right? Because they don't want him there. Uncle Uncle uh, Harry's reading. Moving, Uncle Harry's moving to Henderson. Didn't you read in the paper? Really? Yes. Yes. Of yes. Course. You remember that old saying, Henderson? Of course. <laughs> yes. So, and then we also have, I mean, I'm telling you, everything's going on right now, Jen. Everything. In the- we have North Las Vegas. As you know, their uh, meeting two weeks ago, they delayed any actions on voting on their regulations. So at their meeting tomorrow, I want to say it's at 6. 6 p.m., yeah. It's, I know the item is later down the agenda. It's like num- item number 32, 30-ish, something in there. Right. So that it usually means at about 7, but don't. 
get there late because sometimes they don't go in order of mm. of meeting items and and sometimes they just go really really quickly because there are items that they don't have any action on and so they just read them into the minutes and there's no public comment on it so it's basically they say okay this is going to go on da 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 and there's since there's no public comment there's no debate nothing else then they can move through those extremely quickly it's kind of, kind of like they ram them through yeah and let me just say those to um this to those that may not know those that may have circulation issues or whatnot north las vegas is cold so when you go to their city hall oh. so make sure that you know if if you have issues with circulation if you get cold easily you know kind of like some people do in the clark county commissioner chambers mm -hmm. make sure you wear a jacket i would hate for somebody to be lost from participating because the AC is a little too much for them. Okay, I'll bring my Snuggie. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, some new news going on. Well, not so much new news, but something I've been talking about for a while. What's up? Uh, cannabis and gaming. Okay, near the two shall mix. That's my, that's my prediction. What is it, right? Near the two shall mix, you are correct, because remember, you were the one that initially discussed the edict that was brought on by the Gaming Commission. In 2012. Well, a few months ago, the Gaming Control Board made it very clear that they want a separation between medical marijuana and the gaming industry. The board decided that a husband with a gaming license and a wife in the medical marijuana industry is just too close of a connection. Wow. So what about the, some of those Herbst brothers? Um, they've got a Herbst brother that, that isn't in the, the family gaming business, and uh, he's applying for a license. I wonder if that kind of connection was too much. But he was the black sheep, so. <laughs> I, I don't know. The gaming uh, board is having a meeting here in Las Vegas. I think this, I don't know if this is actually on their agenda. I know it's at the end of the month, and I'm going to be objecting to uh, anything herbs involved but what had happened was what had happened what happened was <laughs> a local <laughs> restaurant was looking to put in five slot machines the owner hired an operator to work that side and when they went before the control board they found out the operator's wife was involved in medical marijuana the owner of crab corner said that he was blindsided by the debate that ensued between the slot operator and the board the board basically said that they basically told the crab corner to find somebody else. Wow. Um, the crab corner uh, is on what, like Flamingo and, and, and one of those streets right there. It's a Maryland, uh, Maryland based restaurant. And they have, uh, I think they have the Bengal, the Bengals or whatever their, their team there. They watch their, so they're getting machines also. Yeah, I guess that's that's what it seems like. <laughs> um, the Gaming Commission Chairman, Dr. Alamo, said some licensees are even considering leaving the gaming industry for medical marijuana. Now we see which way the wind is blowing, huh? I think that this is going to be more lucrative. What about politicians in MMJ? That's the question. We we have all this gaming. No, no, no. But what about politicians? I Ralston wonder... Report did a wonderful spread on that one. That was that June story that I believe was posted on our weekend Facebook page about the who's who of this former assembly, this former speaker, this lawyer, my cousin's uncle brother's wife, niece's brother-in-law mm -hmm. kind of thing well that that is on our facebook our weekend facebook and i think that we also do have um the youtube video posted on our uh, dot org site our weekend 702.org site so check it out if you if you want to review that uh john ralston if you guys don't know he he really doesn't hold any punches on anything <laughs> and no and he um sure doesn't know about hypocrisy too you know it, it was funny um you know, he argues against some things. Like, one of the things is he's arguing against term limits. And isn't he married to somebody who's an elected individual? I'm just saying. 
Wow, that's so. I mean, you know, you know, this is this is how the town goes. You know, we were just talking about Vegas and how how I love Vegas and the politics here and stuff. I think that we'll call this uh, this Henderson thing with uh, Harry Reid the Fifty Shades of Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I forgot a uh, meeting, uh, looking back through my notes here. Sure. Pahrump. Oh, yeah. Pahrump is like tomorrow. Tomorrow at 8 in the morning. Yeah, so bring your sidearms. And that's not a joke. You can wear you can wear that's guns right. into into their city council meetings. I'm not saying shoot anybody, but it's so refreshing to go into city council and know that somebody might throw down. I'm just saying. That's just me. <laughs> you know, that would make these meetings so much interesting. And can we have a duel? You will support my bill. No, I won't. <laughs> Let's have a duel. I was going to say, if you've ever seen, if you've ever seen like Korean politics, those people they, will get and slap each they, other. <laughs> I've seen some of those YouTube videos. It's hilarious. And you know what? Maybe as, as polarized and divided as our nation is nowadays, maybe we really do need to have some parliament, some congressional meetings like that. What, slap fights? Either that or we could, you know, what, some wrestler, some wrestler or something? <laughs> yeah, get your side arms around. Welcome to Mesquite, Nevada. Speaking of Mesquite. Oh, what's going on with Mesquite? Nice segue. Mesquite reconsiders medical marijuana to beat the state's deadline for this year. And if they can't do it, they're moving full force for next year. There, um, there's consideration of the reintroduction of Bill 44. It's ordinance uh, to amend the city code for uh, medical marijuana establishments. Well, that's awesome. Um, so Mesquite's decided to throw in their, to, to get dealt their hand in the medical marijuana um, in, um, battle that's going on. I don't know if it's a battle really much as a race um, to get all the paperwork Movement. in, to get all the, pay, you know, to get all the fingerprints done, to get the FBI background checks. It's just been a bear doing the paperwork. I did the paperwork in like, I did the paperwork and didn't sign any of it copied it all and they had a notary come over my house to sign it and to, to do all that type of stuff that, 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 that's a, a smart move all right we're going to go for a break and we'll come back to our 420 moment um welcome back las vegas cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Locally owned and operated TSI Total Safety Incorporated has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000. That's 702-967-0000 or visit us at TSIVegas.com. Are you looking for a new career? For the next 20 years, 10,000 people per day in America will be turning 65. They're going to need somebody to take care of them. If you're interested in a career in home care or assisted living care, log on to ProCaregivers.com to find out how you can have a well-paying and secure job in this growing industry. The need for caregivers is so urgent that some classes are subsidized by the state, so you may not pay anything. ProCaregivers.com is certified by the state of Nevada and other states for post-secondary education training certification and can help place you in a job once your training is complete. Log on to ProCaregivers.com for more information today. 
Welcome back to the Weekend 702 Show. Our 420 moment today is about Wiz Khalifa. Wiz Khalifa was born Cameron Jabril Thomas, 26. Um, September 8th, 1987 is his birthday. He was born in Mano, North Dakota. He's better known by his stage name, Wiz Khalifa. He released his debut album, Show and Prove, in 2006, and in 2007, he released the, the song uh, Say Yeah. That's the one with Luda, right? Uh, yeah, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say yeah. yeah. It, um, in 2009, he released uh, a free, or in 2010, he released a free mixtape, uh, Cushion Orange Juice, as part of his download um, for free and on with Atlantic Records. Uh, black and yellow is about Pittsburgh, isn't it? Black and yellow, black and yellow. Possibly, yeah, because uh, green and yellow was about the Packers. Okay, well, black and yellow, um, uh, it was wildly popular um, with Super on the Super Bowl when the Packers played. And the Pittsburgh City Council declared 12-12-12 to be Wiz Khalifa Day. So Wiz Khalifa is our uh, 420 moment a uh, celebrity. What else? What else have we got on Wiz? Well, uh, Wiz Wiz teamed up with uh, bosses at the leading smoking accessory firm Raw, which also happens to be at Champs this week. All right, on to develop the company's first celebrity branded product, Classic Khalifa, Khalifa, the Wiz Pack, which comes with the filters and a small poking tool to help users keep the contents of their roll ups in place. Oh, right on, right on. Raw creator Josh Kesselman said, We are truly taking things to the next level of the smoking game, and we are thrilled to collaborate with Wiz as he is a key influencer in this industry. You know, I've got I've got a statistics here. I don't know whether it's true or not, but it sounds it sounds outrageous. It says uh, that uh, Wiz spends about ten thousand dollars a month on cannabis, and he also smokes daily. I smoke daily, but I do not spend ten thousand dollars a month. I mean, what kind of product have you got to be buying? And all I got to say is, if Wiz Khalifa is spending ten thousand dollars a month on cannabis, Wiz, you need to come here to Nevada, okay? Come on. Will you, will you adopt me? <laughs> <laughs> so we tip our hat to Wiz Khalifa, Wiz our 420 moment person of the day of the week. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, um, let's move on to our first interim meeting on medical marijuana. The Advisory Commission on Administration of Justice Subcommittee on Medical Use of Marijuana met last week, um, and they're the panel that is uh, that hears proposals to fix Nevada's new uh, medical marijuana law. Which I'm proud to say that you sit on, and I'm happy to advocate with you that way the voice of the patients isn't yes. lost in the fold between the rich and the powerful. Yes, and you know what, I'm, I'm up on the board for uh, patient advocacy and to make sure that patients um, don't get um, overlooked in this whole entire process. Um, the meeting, the next meeting is going to be on August 15th at, uh, I think it's 9 a.m. in the morning at the Grant Sawyer Building. It's also in Carson City. My suggestion to you, if you want to attend um, out there, is, you know, to show up early to sign in definitely show up early we got there about a quarter to nine and that room was already pretty much packed so show up early sign in if you'd like to speak and you already know what you want to speak about um either send your comments to the advisory board early or follow up by sending your comments um, and suggestions to the advisory board the last meeting we talked about the way to speed up the application process and my suggestion was to make the application downloadable um, through the state of Nevada and that you pay your $25, you get your application that gives you, you know, you that their, their information for them. And then um, you follow up with the application that you've printed offline. I think that that would save um, the, the state a lot of money and a lot of time and it will help them just be on the back end processing these applications instead of on the front end just sending the applications out it'll save envelopes stamps time it's, and a lot of trees but the thing is is I made those comments in the meeting 
And then afterwards, I sent those comments uh, directly to Chad Westham, and he is um, the head the of new. the new head of uh, the Department of Behavioral and Health Serv- or Health and Behavioral Services Medical Marijuana Division. And so, not only is commenting and making those comments important, but following up with those comments are equally as important because those meetings do a lot of the ideas and stuff flows around, and if you follow up and you follow through with your comments or if you if you send a follow up note with your comments then it it becomes a lot easier i didn't even have to send a follow up before that meeting was even over my comments and suggestions were already approached to be acted on That's which awesome. i felt you see there as i felt really rewarding you know when i came, went up and spoke i spoke about when patients are in state programs they have to often answer you know do you use any kind of narcotics and if you say no somebody can deny your application for lying because you're using cannabis as a medication if you say yes you get kicked out of these state programs because they're federally funded and you know and that's so important that you know people that um and you're you're talking about special programs like section eight like um like food stamps like like snaps like uh job connect programs like any state programs like the state voc re rehab program any state job training program any state edu- any state program mm-hmm. you have to answer them and um a gentleman uh assemblyman paul Aisley, Aisley? Mm-hmm. uh has requested that a bill for the 2015 se- uh 2015 session go into uh what were you just i just lost myself oh um uh, to prohibit denial of benefits to a state or local employee who holds a medical marijuana card and uses the product. Well, yeah, you know, that's really interesting because, you know, Bob Coffin uh, from the city, um, he's a city councilman. He's several times said, well, I use medical marijuana or, or, or I would like to use medical marijuana after I retire. And it's like, come on, Bob. <laughs> You know, several times you've said this. So, you know, I'm not trying to call anybody out personally, but you've already said this in front of hundreds of people. It may have been a Freudian slip. And, you know, if if uh, my wonderful friend on the council mm-hmm. uses medical marijuana. So what? I hope that he does not experience that pain. But I've seen him pull his prescription bottle out and slam it on the dais and say how many pills he takes to deal with pain. Yeah. And that's the whole reason I came here mm-hmm. is, you know, taking all that Vicodin all doggone day. What does it do to your liver? You cannot function. You feel lethargic and you use a little cannabis. Yeah, I function perfectly. Oh, well, yeah. You're telling me you're Mr. Peppy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't have any problem getting up in the morning. I have no problem sleeping and I don't, you know, so when I wake up, I don't have a groggy narcotic effect. So, you know what, if the city council, if somebody, you know, who, if employees that are elected or politicians are using cannabis and they have their cards, so what? That's, that's my take on the whole situation. So, um, we're, I guess we're finished. Oh, you know, the other thing I'd like to comment on about the interim meeting, um, is a uh, protocol for for speaking you're absolutely right the, as many meetings as we as activists have been to mm-hmm. i am shocked shocked and appalled <laughs> no kidding at, at, at the basic protocol well the basic protocol the basic protocol is to go up and you introduce yourself for the record my name is blah 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 for the Good record afternoon, mr and mrs chairman my name is for the record and the thing is you introduce yourself to the chairperson and you speak to the council through the chairperson you don't turn around and talk to the audience or talk to the person next to you no you say um you say you know good good afternoon council members you know thank you you know council um you know you, you say thank you chairperson you know and and then you say you speak your comments you tell people where you live i live in nevada i'm a you're a resident from nevada and you wait see if they ask you any questions and if you'd like to ask any questions to anybody on the council you say 
I would like to address Jennifer so- or you know Jennifer Solis through you, Mr. Chairman. So you address you would address me through a chair per- the chairperson. So you're always addressing the chairperson at the meeting. The other thing is is that when you're done with your comments, don't just turn off the microphone and leave. You you say thank you for, uh, your-, thank you for your time. Um, do you guys have any questions that you would like to ask of me? And if they say no, then you turn off your microphone and step down. And if you'd like to follow up with anybody, like I say, follow up with an email. And and I think the reason it's important to go over that is, you know, the world is watching us. You know, not only people at the meetings, people online, people in different states, you know. And as we advocate for this, we don't want to seem like a bunch of yippie stoners that don't know what we're doing. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's very important to to project a professional image. you know, even if you are a patient, um, the more professional that you appear, the more credence and weight your comments get. You're absolutely right. And okay, so we're going to go on to some happier news. So come out and join us uh, on August 15th for the second interim meeting. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about free weed. Yay! <laughs> I always love some free weed. Me too! Uh, Berkeley, California City Council votes to require dispensaries to give free cannabis to low-income patients. So this is not just a suggestion, it's a requirement. Berkeley, City, uh, Berkeley, California City Council voted unanimously to require dispensaries to give away at least 2% of their cannabis for free to low-income individuals, with low-income being defined as anyone making under $32,000 a year or families making under $46,000 a year. I think that is awesome news. You know, we, we at WeCan, we're always trying to help patients that are low income qualify to get their cards so they can have that safe access to their medication. Hopefully, this is an idea that'll move a little uh, easterly. That's true. Oh, and now we're going from free weed to toilet paper? From we- free weed to TP. <laughs> The Coalition to Regulate Marijuana-Like Alcohol in Nevada. The campaign campaign to make marijuana legal in Nevada launched its first ads uh, last week, I believe, in restrooms across Las Vegas. The bathroom-themed ads encourage people to think about the cost of prohibition and the benefits of regulation of marijuana. The toilet paper in the bowl ad. Why flush money down the drain? Marijuana sales... Marijuana sales should produce a stream of revenue for our schools, not violent cartels and criminals. Toilet paper on a roll ad. Well, you know, I think that that's a really good idea because if you look, if you look at their ad, it, you know, it, it's it's a bunch of money inside inside a bowl. It, it looks like a, a, a roll of toilet paper, and you pull it off and throw it in the toilet. Really? Yeah. That that uh, you know what? I want to find that just so I can save some of that. Hey, you know, I I wish it was real money, but yeah, it's just uh, a funny design of toilet paper. Well, you know, it's it's a very, um, it's a very poignant message about, you know, the amount of money that we're just throwing away. We're throwing away, not only we're throwing away all this money that that could um, benefit our nation, but we're also incarcerating people. um, And and we're, you know, just... uh, Wasting resources all over the place. All you know, place. If for for those that are sin- sincerely drug offenders, that money can go into treatment programs. For those that are cannabis, medical, or otherwise, slap their wrist, give them a little fine. You know, what do you do to people who drink alcohol? Exactly, decriminalize unless somebody's actually hurt somebody while they're on cannabis. It's it's really a victimless crime. Um. So this is actually worth repeating. The National Cancer Institute says that pot fights cancer. Duh. But last year, the U.S. government um, principal agency on cancer research, the National Cancer Institute, um, created a stir by publishing the truth that molecules found in pot kill breast and lung cancers in lab tests. 
Uh, it's federally illegal, and they say that there is a Schedule One designation on it with no accepted medical use. But we all, we all know the hypocrisy in that, that they're giving cannabis away to, that where they were giving it away to 13 different patients. We only have a couple of left. Two are left alive, and they, you can actually find that. I actually looked at that information online. I was curious about it. Yeah? Yes. And it's just, I, I honestly don't remember the ailments that they had, but... I think there was glaucoma. Uh, it was glaucoma and M MS, something like that. Some, something like that. But if it, if it has no medical benefits, then why did that uh, professor we spoke about last week get fired for doing research on it? Sue Sisley. This, this is a really important regional news. Sue Sisley got a federal approval to do PTSD research at uh, Arizona State University, I believe. Mm -hmm. And she got about three weeks into the research and then was fired. Um, she has since been on CNN with Sanjay Gupta, and she's been um, on several different radio shows uh, or uh, several different television shows talking about um, talking about what has happened to her she got approval for federal research and then she started federal research then she got the fired. university fired her and the university fired her um you know and, and this is this is really important it, is that that she got approval from the federal government and her own her own um school fired her um, I don't even know, remember, or even know if they gave a justification for firing her. I, I, I don't recall saying one, but I can tell you what. Big Pharmacy, they're the ones behind this. They're the ones that saying it has absolutely no medical value. There's no medical research. You want to know why? Because they got patents on a, a Look lot of it. Look at how many billions of dollars they would lose if you had, let's say, 20 patients using Rick Simpson oil. Yep. Think about, I mean, how many how many uh, individuals with HIV or AIDS do we have in the United States? Think about them using one of the oils or something. All the cancers, people that have, you know, people that, that aren't crazy people that have come out and said, you know, I've been cured yeah. by this. So it's the pharmaceutical industry that would lose all these billions of dollars, and they're like a mafia. They well, I have to say they are. When we were in legislature this past time, uh, and it looked like it looked like this bill was going to pass for dispensaries, the big farmers started showing up in droves. You know them by their Brooks Brothers suits and their slick looking uh, briefcases and stuff. But they did show up in droves. That's for sure. We have some more news out of Arizona. Yes, Arizona okay's medical marijuana. For patients with PTSD, which is fantastic news considering everything going on with our VA today. Thousands of Arizona veterans and others suffering from PTSD will soon be able to obtain marijuana legally. That, that's a really big, that's a really big step. Um, I think that we were one of the first states in the nation to get PTSD on our approved list of four qualifying conditions. Um, California may have, but I'm not. Sh I'm not really sure on that. Um, Beach is saying no. California didn't, so I, I think I'll trust him. And I think everybody is following suit, and that's really good. We really shouldn't forget our veterans and coming um, coming out of a difficult situation, um, having post traumatic stress disorder. You also need to note that you don't have to be a veteran or have even served in a war to have PTSD. Something traumatic happens to you, uh, break into your house, you know, something traumatic, any type of abuse, and mm -hmm. you can get post-traumatic stress disorder especially um, the emotional physical and sexual abuse that yeah that's true and so you don't just have to be a veteran to be uh, diagnosed with PTSD um, so if you've had something traumatic help and, and you're having issues you know um, emotional issues behind it you may want to see a, a therapist about it of course but you can get uh, cannabis to treat your condition yeah you certainly want to make sure you have somebody to talk to you but you don't necessarily have to take their pills you can just easily take cannabis in the form that you choose because you don't necessarily have to smoke it and that's the thing that frustrates me is people always think you know oh, cannabis you just want to smoke that's not the only way to take your medication. No, I like to eat brownies too. <laughs> All right, we're going to um, take a break now. And this is We Can uh, Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada. We Can 702 News. We'll be right back.
Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation toll free 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. We Can 702 is a Nevada cannabis community. We are a 501c3 nonprofit that meets in Southern Nevada. We are a social group that started in Las Vegas for patient support. We've been active in the community for over five years. If you'd like to join us on any of our events or parties, please contact us through Facebook at We Can 702 on Meetup at www.meetup.com forward slash we can 702 our website is www.wecan702.org be a part of the nevada cannabis reform revolution please join us and donate today the von dank group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com What's that smell? Well, you know what that smell is? If you're in Massachusetts, you can tell the cop to mind their own business. <laughs> Not really that harsh, but um, there is a ruling uh, that in 2011 that Massachusetts ruled that decided... Ruling by whom? In Massachusetts. In Massachusetts. State, State Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. It's, I'm sorry. I, I, I feel that the court's important for the, the story. Well, the Massachusetts State Supreme Court uh, ruled that the smell of burnt cannabis does not uh, does not qualify for a search. Um, marijuana, the court acknowledged, generates a pungent aroma, but an owner uh, an odor by itself does not allow a police to determine whether a person has more than an ounce with them. Nice. Possession of an ounce or less of marijuana is not a crime in Massachusetts. Um, they, they've stated, we have held that the odor of burnt marijuana alone cannot support probable cause search in a vehicle without a warrant. Now we will hold that such an odor of unburnt marijuana standalone does not provide probable cause to search in an automobile. So now... Oddly enough, even though they have to wait until 2015 for medical marijuana, if a cop pulls you over, then they cannot search your vehicle if they smell dry or burnt marijuana. So if you're in Massachusetts, when in doubt, put, put it, it out. out. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, so here's the question. Sure. Uh, they, they, can't do, they can't do anything if they just smell it. But what if your car is like a cheat to chong car? What if you like Open roll down the smoke. windows and it like rolls out of there? <laughs> yeah. I think that you can get like as maybe a DUID behind that or, or DUI um, driving while intoxicated. You know, they would have to prove you're intoxicated. And, and I'm not really sure what their nanograms per deciliter is. And that was a good, I mean, I'm not, not to uh, keep going back to old stories, but that, that was a good conversation that was had about that at that interim committee on the deciliter part of the nanograms for what's considered D D U I or well there there was a okay there's a difference because Chad Weston was saying that it's uh two nanograms per ml which is really big than bigger difference than deciliter. Um if you are undergoing cannabis therapy, you can have extremely high levels of THC metabolites um in your body and not be high. So um, basically what, what we were looking at is just to look um, at impairment, not the blood test, not anything else. You can tell if somebody's impaired. I've seen, but you know, you can tell if your friends are faded. You know, you can tell. Your eyes don't lie. <laughs> That's why I have rose colored glasses. 
But yeah, I, I, I thought about, you know, with the scent thing that brought up that conversation that was had at that meeting. That, that was a good conversation. Um, let's move on to Washington State, though. Washington let's, State. Let's hit Vermont first. You want to hit Vermont? We got a few things in Washington. Okay. Let's hit Vermont, and then uh, we'll, we'll go back west. Uh, Vermont's medical marijuana bill took effect uh, on the first of this month. SB 247. Two, uh, two, yes. The new law eliminates the cap of 1,000 patients who may access dispensary, allows naturopath to certify patients, and allows dispensaries to deliver marijuana to patients, which that, that's one of the things I've been advocating because what if you have an MS patient or somebody that doesn't have a caregiver or somebody available that can't get out to get their medication and another good another good qualifying condition for, for that would be what if somebody has seizures they can't they don't have a driver's license if you have a seizure and you go into the hospital they send a paper to the dmv yeah. and they, you may not know this but if you've never had a seizure before and you have a seizure they the hospital sends a paper to the dmv the dmv pulls your license um, and then the only way that you can get your license back is to have a doctor sign off saying that this seizure was a one-time thing and it's not um, is not an ongoing issue. So you may not have a driver's license to be able to get to a, a, a dispensary here in Nevada. Right, and so long as I have a breath in my body, I'm going to continue to advocate for these patients. But uh, legislators also authorized a study of whether post-traumatic stress disorders, PTSD, should be added as a qualifying condition, along with the study of how marijuana legalization and regulation would impact Vermont. Well, this is the, the strange part about this, this law. It, it started out with allowing just a thousand patients to access medical cannabis. Now that's kind of that's way prohibitive in 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 my estimation because it'd be like a mad rush. The first thousand patients who had money and time and knew about this law are okay. The rest of y'all can just you know whatever. But now they've changed this, so that really doesn't matter. Yes, um, a recent Castleton poll commissioned by. MPP found that 57% of Vermonters support regulating marijuana. See, you keep hearing that more and more over the country. And we would support regulating marijuana similarly to alcohol. Only 34% said that they're opposed. Yeah, I mean, I keep hearing that from the adult uh, responsible use people or the legalization people, you know, either either term um, you can use. But you know what? In regulating it similarly to alcohol, I, I don't agree with that. Alcohol is a poison. You can die. Yeah, you can absolutely. die if you drink too much alcohol. I, you, you can't. You, what are you going to do? Pass out? Get the munchies? You can't. You cannot physically lose your life from just smoking marijuana you cannot and from consumption of cannabis you cannot die no and not only that um back to alcohol if you're an alcoholic and you stop drinking you can start having seizures and die too so if you're drinking and you drink too much you can die and if you take yourself off of alcohol and you don't have anything and you start withdrawing you can die from seizures and alcohol related death too so Cannabis is safer. Okay. Alrighty. Moving west to Washington, Jen, the great pot experiment. Well, Washington State has now had, what, a couple of days of legalization. Um, so... The sale of weed or legal recreational cannabis is officially underway in Washington state with just over 20 outlets allowed to open their doors uh, to anyone that is 21 or older. And that happened on July 8th. Uh, some outlets like Bellingham's Top Shelf Cannabis began sales at 8 a.m. Um, on July 8th. And prices range from 13 to $25 a grand depending on the strain and what? the outlet. What? What? Um, under uh, the state law, recreational cannabis stores can sell up to an ounce of cannabis to anyone uh, 21 and older as long as well as up to 16 ounces of cannabis infused solids like brownies, cookies, and 72 ounces of cannabis infused liquids like lotions and tinctures. 
you don't have to ha be a resident of Washington State to purchase your cannabis legally. You just have to have a valid ID and proving that you're at least 21 years or older. Um, they have taken in a lot of money in taxes, too, haven't they? Yeah, you're right. In the first three days of legal recreation with cannabis sales, Washington has earned nearly 150000 in excise taxes. What? And that is just with six outlets open on day one. Really? And the number doesn't even include money made from state or local taxes. In the first day of sales, uh, the state earned 61000 in excise taxes. That number dropped on Wednesday before rising up on Thursday. And the total was brought in for those days at 148256 Wow, that's that's not even a whole week, is it? No, and that's just six outlets open on day one. It's looking, and there are a total of 334 recreational cannabis outlets approved for the states, though most won't be ready to open um, in the weeks and months ahead. Well, you know, and, and that's interesting because we were just predicting on here uh, last week that they would run out of cannabis. Um, as a result of their huge inventory demand for legal cannabis, Washington State, Cannabis City, Seattle's only cannabis outlet, is already sold out and won't have any more for as long as two weeks. Remember, I was talking to you about that. I didn't have the particulars on that, but I had just, I had just got an alert on that story right before we went on air last week. Wow. Wow. I, I mean, w this is exactly what happened in Colorado. We knew that it would follow suit in uh, in um, Washington and and there it's it gonna has. fall suit here in Nevada too yeah unfortunately I, well one of our conversations on that interim meeting back to the interim meeting uh, was about was about maybe legally uh, limiting the amount of cultivation here in Nevada and I think it was a resounding no, no not for the first year they want to make sure and, and uh, I, I want to commend Senator Tick Searbloom and County Commissioner Chris June Kiliani, who said that they wanted to make sure that there was enough medication for the Nevada residents. You know, and yeah. they're not going to limit the cultivation, you know, for at least a year. And it's going to take a public hearing before they limit that mm -hmm. cultivation. So kind of like... Uh, Oprah with everybody gets a car, Steve <laughs> sits slack, and you get to grow, and you get to grow, and, and you, you get, get to produce, and you get to grow. Yeah, at, at the Clark County Commission, I almost felt like reaching under my seat to see if I had one of these special use permits. Yay! <laughs> Maybe if I uh, ask Santa Sisolak, I, <laughs> I can get one under my tree this year. I will tell you, you know what? I, I've talked to uh, Mr. Sisolak, uh, Commissioner Sisolak in private a um, couple different times. And even though he is a tough cookie and grills people and and um, he's really tough on people. Your three minutes is over. Get out of here. Um, he is a really nice guy. Um you know in his own grumpy sort of way you're absolutely right you know and when when you get to talk to him one-on-one -on -one, you can see the real human side of him versus him and his role as chairman of the county commissioners and you know it's nice to get to know your elected officials to have that opportunity it really is and and you know and being a chair also it's kind of like herding cats um, and he's and I you know I, I commend him for keeping a steady hand on that whole situation well now we're we're gonna talk about world news guess who the luck of the Irish <laughs> Ireland is going to legalize cannabis-based medicines. This is great. Uh, this was just out that um, Ireland's Department of Health has announced that in the coming weeks it will introduce regulations which allow for use, possession, and pharmacy distribution of cannabis-based medicines such as Sativex. Well, Irish Medicine Board's uh, no exact time was given on when regulations will be released, but, you know... It's It'll, coming soon. It's moving. Okay, oh. we have Champs the rest of the week. We have Wednesday and Thursday from 11 to 6. And then Coffee with the Mayor. That on is on Thursday at 9 a.m. at Waffles. That was in Steve Ross's district. Look for it on our um, Weekend Facebook and our Weekend Meetup site. And we have our 6th anniversary pool party on July 26th. Again, please check us out on Meetup or our Weekend 702 Facebook page. 
Well, that's about all we have uh, for this week, and we'll you'll hear from us next week on Nevada Cannabis News. Until then, be safe, everybody. Thanks for listening. See you next week.